Let's go into this IRS issue, which is at least um, somewhat substantive in some respects. It's being completely blown out of proportion, and of course, it is going to be used, like I say, this one, I think uh, the Republicans in particular are very happy about this, um, this issue cropping up because the Benghazi thing, like I said, was crumbling. This IRS stuff is a little more troubling, but, but I, frankly, um, the more I read about it and understand what took place, uh, it's more troubling just because of the implications of it which is that we're going to see less scrutiny of all of these groups than we should be seeing. The issue is not that, in my mind, that groups applying for this uh, 5014C status were scrutinized. It's just that they didn't, the IRS didn't seem to have the resources to scrutinize all of them and thoroughly enough. There were staffers in the Cincinnati field office of the IRS who, because they were receiving so many applications for 504C status, which is a IRS status that basically says 501C4, I should say. These groups, which theoretically promote social welfare grew exponentially following the Citizens United case. And they were especially popular because you did not have to, in addition to being tax exempt, which means that these are groups that are applying for a special tax status and deserve scrutiny. You shouldn't be able to just sign up for this and just get it. Because you need to prove that you are not functioning to primarily enhance the ability of certain candidates to get elected or certain members of certain parties to get elected. And apparently there were 298 groups selected for special scrutiny. 72 of them had the Tea Party, had the words Tea Party in their title. 13 had the word Patriot and 11 had the words, or the numbers, 9-12, or 912. That would have been a Glenn Beck-inspired group. Now, at the time, Tea Partiers were running candidates, were supporting candidates and whatnot, and these field officers decided this is a quick way for us to wade through <clears throat> the hundreds of groups that are applying for this special status, where they don't have to uh, say who their donors are, where they do not pay taxes on the money they raise. The bottom line is, it was inappropriate, perhaps, perhaps inappropriate, for these low-level staffers to use this as a screening mechanism. If, you're, if, you're, if your group had the word Democrat or Republican in it, you would also get special scrutiny. But 501c4s, well, let's just give you a sense that uh, the 501c4 for heritage says that it's religious, educational, charitable, scientific, literary testing for public safety to foster national or international amateur sports competition or prevention of cruelty to children's and animals organizations. Um, that's what the Heritage Foundation says that they're up to. The point is these groups have just run amok. And uh, same too with whatever it was. The... Um, Organizing for America. Does anybody believe that group that was set up essentially by former Obama campaign officials was a social welfare organization primarily? I mean, give me a break. There should be no groups that are discriminated against. 
And perhaps you shouldn't pick out certain ones by a loose criteria, although I don't know how else you're going to prioritize to be subjected to extra scrutiny. None of these groups were rejected. Some decided they're not going to go through the process because they don't want to answer these questions, which raises a red flag. I'm sorry. If we're going to give you tax-exempt status, as far as I'm concerned, you should jump through hoops, particularly if it's a close call, particularly if you're just growing at a time in a run-up to an election. Especially if you're pushing this anti-tax agenda. Well, whatever. I mean, the point is, is that we all know Tea Party groups were pushing for candidates. You'd have to be a moron to not use that as, hey, that could be a potential red flag. I don't know how I'm going to check all these groups. I'm going to check the ones that are, if one's named, like, if uh, the election for, I'm going to check that one, too. I'd like to see the whole list that they use, frankly. Ezra Klein had a good piece on this. He says, nowhere does the IRS mention, quote, an organization formed by top political operators for the clear and obvious purpose of reelecting or defeating the president. But that's what 501c4s have become. According to data collected by OpenSecrets.org, 501c4s spent $92 million dollars in the 2010 election, 254 million in the 2012 election. Is that just coincidental? Did we need that much more social welfare promoting spending during those years? Give me a break. And you're seeing all these super PACs open up 501c4s as well for the same reason. They can hide who their donors are. Whether that's a moveon.org or the Heritage Foundation. He writes, they were just trying to separate the organizations that seem to be likely to be overly political. But that simply speaks to the underlying issue. The IRS hasn't set down clear rules, either internally or externally, for dealing with these new types of organizations. The IRS has ruled that social welfare groups can't be primarily political, but what does it mean to be primarily political? Right now, most groups are assuming it means spending more than half your money on political activities, but no one really knows where their money's going. None of the Tea Party groups scrutinized by the agency actually lost the 501c4 designation. Yes, it is wrong that these field operatives use this as a shortcut. It was reversed once it went up the food chain and the funniest part about this is Marco Rubio is calling for the resignation of the IRS leadership. I strongly urge that you and President Obama demand the IRS's commissioner's resignation, effective immediately. The current IRS commissioner is only an acting commissioner. The one who presided over the IRS at the time that this took place was appointed by George Bush and left the agency in November. The current one is simply an acting chief because the Republicans have obstructed the appointment of a new one. <laughs> but I imagine we have not even begun to hear the end of this. Bet this new chief knew about Benghazi too. Yeah, indeed.